My name is Lisa Gig. I'm an associate professor in biological sciences at the University of Calgary. I call myself a petroleum microbiologist, and really what we do in our research lab is we examine how microbes impact the oil and gas industry. We have a lot of expertise here to start investigating MIC or microbial corrosion. So this is really uh, one of the analytical chemistry approaches that we use to investigate different fluids that we would get from an oil patch of some kind. So one of the things we do is essentially organic extractions to look for either hydrocarbons or various products of microbial degradation. So we call this organic extractions for hydrocarbon or for metabolite analysis. Gabrielle here is working on some groundwater samples we've recently received to look for diagnostic indicators that in situ hydrocarbon biodegradation is occurring. Divya here is extracting DNA and getting samples ready to PCR amplify. Right now, what she's doing is looking for specific genes that we know are responsible for encoding hydrocarbon degrading enzymes. So because we know what we're looking for, we can assay for these using molecular biology approaches. And this is one of the standard assays that we, we typically do. We look for these hydrocarbon biodegrading genes in our samples. Another approach that we use widely is anaerobic culturing. And so not every lab is set up to culture microorganisms from environmental samples. So Courtney here is making sure that all of the items that touch and you know, an anaerobic culture are actually anaerobic. So we use specialized gases such as nitrogen or nitrogen CO2. We have to transfer our cultures using needles and syringes. It's not like aerobic microbiology where we have to transfer between open flasks. So she has been babying some hydrocarbon degrading cultures for several years and now they're ready to transfer. And we have to keep them essentially in these little sealed bottles to maintain an anaerobic environment. So this is one of the major approaches that we use A lot of the work we do is not necessarily at room temperature, so we have some special incubators that we, we try to culture things at higher temperatures. For example, a lot of our research involves looking at transformation of different chemicals that are down in an oil reservoir, and oil reservoirs are not room temperature. They're much hotter generally, so in these particular experiments we are trying to cultivate different kinds of organisms with special abilities at 50 degrees. So right now we are trying to purify organisms that we think might have the ability to biodegrade uh, specific polymers, for example. So we do a fair bit of our culturing at these higher temperatures, more closely mimic the conditions in a real oil reservoir. So this is Oscar. He is actually running a, a gas chromatograph, what we call it for short, a GC. And what this does is it allows us to analyze for specific kinds of components. So it could be hydrocarbons, it could be a number of different gases such as carbon dioxide or methane. And this is really part of our analytical chemistry suite of tools that we use to look for different kinds of compounds in the environment. Oscar has done a nice experiment under anaerobic conditions where he's looking for the biodegradation of different polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. So today he's essentially analyzing his samples to see whether or not these compounds have been biodegraded. As part of our analytical protocols, once we've done our organic extractions, we have to concentrate them. Typically, we're looking for really low concentrations of different chemicals in the environment, like a groundwater environment. As I, we had shown you with, with what Gabrielle was doing earlier, organic extractions, we extract about a liter of groundwater, and we end up concentrating these samples down, once we've extracted them, to about 50 microliters. So we have a huge extraction, and that's because a lot of the chemicals that we look for in the environment are on the micromolar or nanomolar level. So we use this, this rotovap, essentially, it's just a standard method of concentrating larger volumes of solvent into really small volumes of solvent.
Divya is essentially looking at a gel that she has run. Earlier, she was doing some preparation for PCR amplifications. So basically now she's just running a, a, a gel to see if that product and that reaction actually worked. So in my laboratory, we, in addition to uh, the analytical chemistry and the culturing, we also do a lot of basic molecular biology techniques. We're really always looking for, for example, microbial communities, who's there. So we do a lot of amplifications of the 16S ribosomal RNA gene, which is really a normal or classical method of looking for specific kinds of organisms. And or we can do PCR amplifications, make millions and millions of copies of specific genes. And again, this particular assay that she's looking for is some of these genes that we know are responsible for hydrocarbon biodegradation. So we're well equipped in the lab to do both standard polymerase chain reaction or PCR reactions and to do this quantitatively if we need. So we have all the tools that we really need to start to look for different kinds of either microorganisms or different kinds of genes in the environment. This is Oscar. He's showing me some data here on bioinformatics. So what we often do is once we've got our sequencing done from our amplifications, we then compare those sequences against a database of known, let's say, organisms, all the known organisms in the world. Oscar is programming in R to, to run a program to analyze this data, and it's actually working out very well. So he's, he's able to then show in his different samples what kinds of microorganisms uh, that he has present that are presumably biodegradable some of the hydrocarbons that he's testing. So we do have the ability not only to amplify some of these genes, but we can also, in the end, analyze all this kind of data. So it really informs us about what kind of organisms are involved in our different metabolic processes.